Welcome to St. Louis and Me. I'm Michelle Anselmo. Today we're joined by Terry O'Daniel, and she's the Executive Director of Academy of St. Louis. Terry, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having us, Michelle. What is the Academy? Let's start there. Well, the Academy is a school that is designed to help students that have been in other schools in the past and have been unsuccessful in their educational endeavors um, due to the, their, their learning disabilities. And talk a little bit about how long you guys have been around, uh, and you're located in Chesterfield? We're located in Chesterfield, Missouri. We've been um, around for 15 years, and we serve grades K through 12th grade, and we're fully accredited through advanced ed. I liked one of the things you mentioned, um, that this is a great place for kids maybe who have no other outlets. They've tried the traditional format. So talk to us a little bit about the needs you're seeing and some of these families and children that um, are being served. Sure, well we have a lot of families and a lot of students that have gone through other schools, either private, public schools, and because of the class sizes, uh, the teachers do not have the resources to really attend to the students as they need. A lot of our students, well all of our students actually that are enrolled need very individualized curriculum and therefore um, it, that's not always, always available to them in the regular school setting. So there's a lot of like that one-on-one -on -one personal Absolutely. attention. Absolutely. Yeah, so how is the, the day structured, for example, or if a family would um, want some more information, do they come for a tour? Sure, yes, they would call. They, usually most people find us on our website. They give us a call, they come in, we invite them for a tour, and they look at the school, and I always like them to look at each classroom see our students, meet our teachers, to see if they can envision their child at our school. I think it's really important, especially when a lot of these kids have had some type of trauma in their educational um, careers so far, and it's really good for the parents to be able to look and see, is this gonna be a good fit for my son or my daughter? Is this a safe environment in which they can learn? And talk about the environment, um, because it's not as traditional. They're sensory motor. You guys have thought about everything that um, a lot of these kids would need um, to be surrounded with. Sure, absolutely. Um, the classroom sizes are very small. We have six students um, in maximum in every classroom. And then we have a full-time special ed teacher and a full-time assistant in the classroom as well. And then our students, not only do they need academic help, a lot of them have functional curriculum and um, social curriculum, emotional curriculum as well. So it's a pretty intense program. However, we move at the pace that the student needs. So as in, um, you know, to, which is not typical in some of the other schools, uh, we can take our time with these students. We can help, help them, first of all, feel very safe and secure at our school, start building relationships with them so they can trust us. And then from, then, from there on, then we can just move ahead with their academics and the other things that they need. And talk to us how the school was founded and a little bit about the story. Sure. Um, well, about 15 years ago, I realized that my daughter, who had a learning disability, was not going to be able to stay in the private school that she was in. So I looked around St. Louis, and I just could not find the right environment for her to learn. My husband and I were very concerned with her academically, socially, emotionally, and also her faith. And so um, my background is in school administration, so it seemed to make sense that we would uh, go ahead and move forward with starting a school, which is what we did, and it's been 15 years ago. And you have met so many parents, you know, when they come to you and they're at that point, talk to us a little bit about where they, they are, what they've tried, and some of the concerns or fears that, that they have. Well, I would say the number one concern most of our families have, um, even the students as well as the parents, is what's going to happen in the future. What happens to mom? What happens if something happens to mom and dad, and these students um, are not prepared to be going to the adult world by themselves? So we really spend a lot of time with transitioning into adulthood. There's a totally separate program when a student is enrolled in our school. We begin that process of transitioning from that moment on till when they graduate in 12th grade. We also have a program that um, is like a gap year program between when they graduate 12th grade and when they may move on to either a job or to post-secondary education. You meet a lot of parents who have said, we've tried everything, there's, there's no way this can work. And, and what do you say, say to that? There's hope. I always feel like our parents need to be you know, filled with hope because they've been through so many different situations that has really not turned out very well for their children. And it's very, it's a very much, it's very much an emotional roller coaster for them. So to come into a school where we really listen to the needs of their child and take all the information, all the testing from all the neuropsych testing that they've had done, pediatricians um, diagnosis, when we take all those things together, we simply put a program together that reflects all those needs. 
Yeah, so is it more kind of of a personalized approach with a lot of collaboration between everything they've kind of experienced up until this point and they get to school? Absolutely. So we look at past what has been tried in the past. We look at all the testing that they've had done. And then we put a program together that reflects that. Some students can have the same diagnosis, but it can be layered in different ways, and so their needs may be different than the person next to them that has the same type of diagnosis. So it's really important that we take that into consideration and get to know that child and, and help them uh, understand what is the best way for them to learn, what is their learning style, and how we can help them with that. And let's talk about the dedicated staff, uh, because a lot of these situations can't be easy. So talk a little bit about the, the skills and the credentials and how you've got this team that can meet all these needs. Sure. Well, we really, I really is a team. Uh, we can't do this without a team approach. We have um, teachers that have been with us for quite a while, and they have, um, they're all special ed teachers, and they've all been trained in our methodology as well um, so, that they, so that we can have that team approach. What kind of students do well here when we're talking about whether it's autism or behavior issues? Is this a school where all these needs can be met? Yes, it really is. I know a lot of schools in St. Louis that, that have programs for kids with special needs uh, are either they take children that are higher on the spectrum that have higher IQs and some that take ones that are only have the lower IQs and lower functioning ability. At the academy, however, we are there to help students in any of those ranges. So we have students that have IQs from 50 to 130. And so you can see the real large gambit there of students that we serve. So what does that mean? Does that mean we have one program and they all fall into that? No. It means that we have a lot of different programs that these students are in and we serve their needs individually. So when we have some students that have a lower IQ but they need a lot of functional functional living skills and so their program is still academic but it also has that component to it. We also have students that are very very much so college bound so and some of them may also have some behavior problems that may have stemmed from being in the wrong educational environment in the past. So what we do with that is we work with them on their behaviors to teach them how to cope and then also we want to work um, with them academically and also with their functional skills but obviously not as much on the functional skills because they are college bound um, so they do need that really rigorous college prep as well. I'm sure you've seen so many success stories over the last 15 years yes. too. Yes we have most of our students I would say probably 90 percent of our students go on to graduate and go into a post-secondary education others go into a vocational setting some of them go right into employment However, with all those situations, we are there to help guide them and their parents through the whole, through the whole um, procedure, the whole process. Yeah, and you guys are really closely aligned with the family. How important is it for mom, dad, or caregivers um, to be involved in and invested what goes on at school? Well, for success, it's, an, it's a must. We have parents that are very much, they're very concerned about their, their child and what their future is going to be. And really, they've been involved since the child's been born. That most of their children have been diagnosed by the time they are eight to ten years old and so they've had this um, this concept of of having a child that needs something different um, in the education environment and so therefore they've been involved since the children have been very young so when they come to our school I will have to say the joyous the most joyous um, thing for us is that we see that they know when they drop their child off in the morning at 8.15 that they have seven and a half hours of total confidence that their child is being taken care of and really we want their child there. Sometimes we get students who come to our school and they've really never had the feeling that they're really wanted in a school. For the Academy of St. Louis, this is who we serve. We serve students that really other schools have not been able to help and that has a way to rub off on, on students and they can start to feel that and it starts to become part of their identity. And so what we want to do is take their identity and reshape that into the identity in which Christ has given them. And he's the creator of them. And so therefore we know that if they can find their identity and goodness in him, then they're on the right track. Is this your passion? It really is. It, I get very excited when I talk about this. I've seen so many students fall through the cracks and there's no, there's no reason for it. I mean, we really just need to slow down a little bit, take our time, really get to know each student, look at the reports that we have on them, their diagnosis, and really put together some individual curriculum and, and different, um, put together curriculum and just a plan of life for them along with their parents.